guys, how you doing? Every week, I am Miss Chantel Norman. Chantel Norman greets her fans online. Basically, we just going with the flow. Because of the coronavirus pandemic, the singer of the group, Jaw Movement, took her talents from the stage to the palm of your hand. Yeah, he took a toll on us. Back in March, performing halls, clubs, and restaurants shut down as cases of coronavirus surged throughout the state, leaving performers like Norman without work. But as other industries send their employees to work remotely, she decided to do the same. During the pandemic, I have learned a lot. And what I mean by learn a lot is figuring out different creative ways to still entertain. And as you have probably seen, you've probably seen a lot of musicians and artists that have done a lot of live streams. And decided to bring back live music to the Sun Coast virtually. We was able to um, partner with Van Wezel and Madison's and put on this little happy hour. Fast forward to now, the state of Florida has since reopened, but performance venues can only proceed with limited capacity. I mean, the arts are like the number two or three employer in, as a whole in, in Sarasota County. You know the saying, the show must go on, and different performing arts centers here on the Sun Coast basically did that and moved their shows a different direction. I never thought janitorial would be taking such a huge focus of my job, but that's what we had to think about. Mary Benzo is the executive director of the Van Weasel, and she never imagined something like this would ever happen. From adding more hand sanitizers to constantly disinfecting the hall with this fogging machine. This to keep audiences, staff, and performers safe. And they're not the only ones. Other theaters and halls are implementing CDC guidelines, even on stage. Oh, Just last month, the Manatee Performing Arts Center produced an indoor performance of You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown. And check this out, the actors wore face shields the whole time. It's a little intrusive and a little odd when you first start to watch the show, but somehow your mind just erases that and you accept it after a little bit. And at the Sarasota Opera, they had to cut the number of performers on stage. We have uh, six singers and two pianists. They have been in a bubble. Uh, you know, we've had a lot of frequent testing and making sure they're safe. But with all these adjustments, the question now is, how are the arts affected financially? About 45% of our revenue comes from ticket sales. The rest comes from donations. And uh, that's, you know, ticket sales. What we're doing for the, what we're gonna make for these concerts and even these small operas we're doing doesn't come near to covering what our losses are. Um, we have wonderful and generous donors who have been very supportive during this time. There has been some federal money. We were able to qualify for a payroll protection uh, program loan, as well as from a CARES Act loan from the uh, Sarasota County. So far, how's it going? Like you see this going further into the future now? I think once we are in control of this pandemic, and I'm not saying that's happening tomorrow, it's going to take a while. I don't really anticipate us doing a full production with our normal forces until at the very earliest, the fall of 2021 and maybe not even into the winter. But for artists and musicians like Norman, they say this pandemic did change the industry for the better. We have a lot of fans in Africa um, and in, in California, believe it or not. So, And I think a lot of it also was like streaming our original music. Um, it's now like picking up because everybody's just home and like streaming music. So. Meanwhile, the stage lights continue to burn bright here on the Sun Coast, illuminating the souls of those in areas well beyond. In Sarasota, Francesca Constantini, ABC7, your local station.